All right, welcome back to another Steam audit video. We are on game number 164, I believe. And the goal is to get 200 games done by the end of the year. And then I'll make a nice, I'll try to make a nice edited video where I go over some highlights of that list. So what do we have today? Ghost and Goblins Resur Resurrection. Right now it's $20.09. Full price is $29.99. The deal is good till November 19th. And just a cursory review of it. It looks like it's a, oh yeah, it does have shared split screen co-op and trading cards if that matters to you. It looks like it's a, it's a kind of an updated version of the original. Updated graphics, maybe some new stu other stuff added. And they have the original soundtrack. But yeah, it's a, a new coat of paint on an old classic. It's released June 1st of 2021. 85% positive out of 304 reviews. All time. And 84% positive out of 33 reviews. And when I'm all the way done, I'll look and see what the reasons for the negative reviews are. But I don't want my own opinion to be tainted by that. I love the Ghosts and Goblins games, but I've never played them long enough to get good at them. I played them long enough for a period where I'll get to the point where I'm uh, adequate and then I'll stop playing and then the next time I go to play I'm awful again. So yeah. This is Okay. Let's see what, looks like there's four different levels. Let's see what page is. Failed to save game. What the hell? Looks like there's execution grounds or a graveyard. It definitely has the the UI and presentation of a modern class modern retro game. Okay. This looks nice. Is this stuff, are these guys really just taking off when I get on the screen? Oh yeah, this is like easy mode. But you can get hurt.
Seems like there's... Actually, now that I think about it, the original Ghosts and Goblins had, had kind of weird controls you had to get used to. It's like they've recreated them, but it doesn't feel like it was on purpose. Or maybe it was. Oh shit. Yeah, it's definitely easy mode. I'm all it took a lot of times getting hit. There we go, get rid of that guy. Ah shit. So yeah, you can die on page. Yeah, I am not doing so well. But yeah, so far I'm liking this game. It's different enough from the old Ghosts and Goblins where it feels like a legitimate game. New game, not just a cash-in. There is some cheap stuff that goes on, but that's kind of just ghosts and goblins. It is. It's a well designed game, but there's a lot of stuff that feels cheap. Oh, shit. As far as, yeah, presentation, this nails it. And even the gameplay is. I'm sure there's Ghost and Goblin. There, there's people that are such purists when it comes to the game that they're not going to like this for whatever reason. As far as the game in its own right, coming from somebody that's a, that has a passing interest in the franchise and enjoyed it, but isn't a super hardcore fan. I'm really enjoying myself. The, I love the art style. The game controls enough like the original where it feels like the same type of game, but has some... I definitely believe it's the... This art style is an upgrade. I will... Oh, ah, shit. This guy is an asshole. Yeah, this guy's de definitely an asshole. That's the only way I can describe him. Come on. Ah, oh, shit. Yeah, this boss fight just kind of sucks. Or is that not even a boss fight? Apparently it wasn't even a boss fight. Well, that enemy kind of sucked. I remember these guys from the arcade game.
So if I had to pick between this or the the Capcom Power System one, the CPS one version, I don't know. The I kind of have a soft spot for the classic version. I'd say either game is a, a top quality game in its own right. In this game you can you can legally own. Ah shit. I like how it doesn't they have different difficulty modes, so you're not just locking out. They might be able to love the aesthetic and exploring the world, but they just suck at the gameplay. And some people might say, well, the tough shit, they can play something else. But it definitely doesn't hurt, at least making the game. Oh, I'm, I'm not doing well. I don't believe making the game more accessible is really an issue, especially when you leave the the ramped up difficulty for the people that want it. <laughs> ah, shit. And then leave the easy difficult for people like me that aren't any good at the game. <laughs> but yeah, artistically, this... This is... Ah, shit. And some of the stuff's hard to is hard to tell if you're not paying full attention what it's going to do. So what's it want me to do? Oh there we go, I see. Oh yeah, you can shoot down, I forgot about that. And you can also, yeah, you shouldn't play how I'm playing, that's for sure. So yeah, it's enough of this. Artistic masterpiece. Makes it more accessible to people that aren't very good at the game, which is most, I would say most people aren't that good at the game. They can learn to become good at it, but I bet most people that owned the game as a kid never got very far. Definitely most of them didn't actually beat the game. So yeah, you're taking an old IP, updating it, adding new content, and making it more accessible. So maybe somebody that wouldn't have otherwise played the, the CPS1 arcade game because, well, access, maybe they didn't have access to the arcade machine. And picking up one of those machines is going to set you back a lot of money. Even back then, it would have set you back a lot of money. And I think about any version you're going to pick up, it's probably going to set you back quite a bit of money. Even the even the DOS version would probably cost a decent chunk of money. So yeah, here you can get access to an IP with mod with some modern design sensibilities. It's more accessible, but it has new content that you can scale up the difficulty for people that are hardened with the franchise. I'd say it's definitely worth the twenty, thirty dollars. Oh, there's some challenges too. You got that stuff. Yeah, I'll definitely be playing this some more. And yeah, it's it's deserving of its of the praise it gets. I've been terrible about actually updating our curator page. We do have the Mega Egg Gaming 
Steam Curator page. I have been quite awful at actually getting all the reviews on there. So yeah, let's go ahead and Ghosts and Goblins Resurrection. Yeah, it's a top tier game. Definitely recommend it. So yeah, hope you enjoyed the review. Please like, subscribe, and have a great day.